back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and I have a budget fountain pen that I want to share with you today. This is the Bauer 051, a metal fountain pen with a medium nib, and it is a pen that has surprised me. I have had this pen in my possession since February of 2021, and this is now at the time of this filming, it is September of 2021. I just kept passing it over for other pens like, you know, the Curados that I reviewed last week. And I finally inked it up for the first time. I had washed it out, cleaned it out when I first got it. I inked it up for the first time just this week. And do you know what I discovered? Well, I'm going to tell you what I like about this pen, what I don't like about this pen, and all of that good stuff. And we'll do a writing test. And I'll answer that question. What did I think of this pen that I waited so long to check out and is it any good? Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice with this pen is that it is a fingerprint magnet, right? Very shiny metal pen. There you go. I uh, I like this finish. I, I think I accidentally chose the one that was pinstriped instead of just solid black. I think think that I was actually meaning to get the solid black, but this is what came, and I don't know if that was my bad clicking. I, I have no idea, but I think it's a nice looking pen. Those are your only two, as far as I can tell, your only two choices on color, uh, striped black or just black uh, with, of course, the chrome cap and into the barrel here. So, uh, very simple design. It is, uh, I think, a nice looking design. There are some things about it that are uh, unique to the Monteverde Impressa, which this pen uh, mimics. Uh, not unique to this pen particularly, such as the fact that it is square at one end and round at the other. Very simple, just all metal, and as I said, fingerprint magnet and probably a bit of a scratch magnet. I think there's one or two that I have on here. I don't know if probably from shipping. I really haven't. I've used the pen a lot in the last week or so, but I haven't done anything that would have caused scratches and it doesn't seem particularly more delicate uh, that way. So I'm thinking maybe shipping or manufacturing. The clip, which I do like the shape of and is made quite sturdily, is spring-loaded. You can see there. It's a spring-loaded clip works very well, this nice elongated, whatever you call uh, this part of the clip. Somebody knows the name of that. If, it, if there's a name for it, I, I could use the name for that. But the end of the clip here um, really goes in and out of the pocket quite well, holds it securely. The, it's spring-loaded and the spring is strong enough. So I, I like that. Uh, you notice it turns a little bit. I think I'm actually, let's see here. I think I'm actually unscrewing the pin because I had it open earlier. I don't think it actually go, moves around. Nah, that's more secure. Uh, but it does have, let's go ahead to that, a plastic sleeve inside. I haven't really had issues with the pen drying out or anything, but I also have written with it quite a bit uh, in the week that I've had it inked up. So that we'll just have to leave for longer term use to really know about dry out. Sometimes when I have pens that have some kind of a mechanism like that or openings here, then dry out becomes a little bit more of an issue. But that's still kind of an open-ended thing on this particular uh, pen. So there's that. You have a black plastic section, kind of a decent length there. Just a minimal, put my finger there so you can kind of see, a minimal uh, two-step step down and not at all sharp. Nicely done. The metal work on this pen is done, I think, very well for the price class that this pen is in. Not bad at all. A little bit of an hourglass shape. Very comfortable pen to hold. The length, as you can see, unposted, is quite nice. And the uh, section is comfortable. That's a number five nib to give you an idea of, of how far your grip is going to be from the paper. But very well balanced, unposted, and a nice weight to this pen. When you post it, that cap is not so heavy, and so it, it is still, you notice, you know, the difference, obviously, but it is still a nicely balanced pen. Now, for my hand, this, uh, the edge of the cap does hit my hand, so sometimes I write with it unposted just because that's just kind of right there. Your mileage will vary depending on your, your grip and the size of your hand, all that good stuff. Anyway, as I said, it is a number five nib, 
a pretty standard fare for a number five Bauer uh, nib with a plastic feed. Now this one is a medium. You see a lot more fines and extra fines in Chinese pens, but this is a medium. As you can see, it has a decent amount. Let me move this down there of tipping material. So that's going to come up later in the writing test. But a a nice pen and a, a decently styled nib. When you open up the pen, you will find, of course, that it does include a standard Bauer uh, converter, and that is an international standard. Uh, so you can use your ink cartridges that you've got and things like that. Well, that's all good. Not anything spectacular on that uh, converter. Just a normal. You know, if you if you've got Jin Hao's and Wing Songs, you know it's it's kind of the same quality as uh, as the Jin Hao's and Wing Songs as far as that converter goes. But that all is included, and it does work just fine. I haven't had any issues whatsoever with uh, ink flow or anything like that. That's the style of the pen. I like it. You may very well like it. It's a good looking pen. It's nicely weighted. Ergonomics are nice. Now let's see what happens when we write with this pen. All right, let's see how the pen writes. As I mentioned, part of my interest in this is that medium nib, and I have been really impressed. So this is the Bauer 51 or 051. And it is a medium nib, very much a medium, a true medium. And this is, and I'm going to abbreviate Monteverde, and this is Wisdom Purple. Nice ink, by the way. And I did, I did not choose a Monteverde ink here on purpose. That's just, that's just kind of the way that that worked. Test this for wetness, and quite nice. Uh, puts plenty of ink on the paper. It does not really have... Wow. I can do those except on camera where I write at a little bit different angle. Uh, no real flexibility or anything like that. A little bit of a... It kind of railroaded there. That's interesting. I'm going to be quiet and let you listen. This is on Rhodia paper. That skip may be me. Kind of felt like I lifted up just a little bit. Okay, so the pen writes really nicely and uh, just a, a great smooth nib. There's just a lot to like here, I think, in terms of the comfort of the pen. I really do like the ergonomics of the pen and uh, I just I think for f for five bucks I didn't even pay five bucks for this pen with shipping uh, when I got it now I bought mine on eBay and I can't find them on eBay now but you can get them on AliExpress for four bucks all day long with free shipping from China it'll cost you about twice that to get it from Amazon if you're impatient and I think this pen for that, what a bargain. Uh, you're getting a nice metal pen that is a nice length as well. Unposted, the length of, the length of the pen is nice. It's The shape of it is quite comfortable. So I really do think that this is, if this is a, a style you like, I think it's a good pen. And I've had very good experience with mine in the medium nib, which is something, you again, you just don't see quite as often on pens like this and that for me was the appeal and then everything else about it I just came to like after it got here and I finally got to using the pen. Let's do a quick size comparison before uh, we have our our goodbyes for this review. So this is the Hongdian 660, that wooden pen I reviewed not all that long ago. Very similar in shape and similar in basically nothing else. Uh, country of origin that would be about it. Here it is next to a Vanishing Point Capless by Pilot. Actually very similar in length, um, maybe even similar 
in weight, uh, but certainly different in ergonomics. But, you know, I can't think uh, size-wise. That gives you a pretty good idea. What else do I have here on the desk? Actually, I'm, I am short on fountain pens. What is wrong with me today? Uh, the Sharpie S-Gel. Maybe some of you have those. So that gives you a little bit of a length thing there. Or the uh, Kuru Toga by Uniball. My, this has really quickly become my favorite uh, mechanical pencil. I just absolutely love that thing. haven't reviewed it, but I absolutely love that pencil. So that gives you a little bit of size reference uh, for that pen. Just kind of, you know, normal, right? <laughs> Basically, that's what you get out. It's a normal sized pen. Look at that. Hey, ball, this pen, you know, it's normal. There you go. That's what you got. And that's what you're getting out of me today. So God bless you. Have a great weekend. Stay well. And I'll see you in the next review, which will be this pilot. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to give that another go. And I have a bonus in that video that I didn't have in the one that I took down about it. God bless you.